welcome back to the design class. We got a little bit more to talk about with in terms of grafting, and then we'll move on to box pleating, which is going to be super exciting. So today there's actually going to be no, no physical folding. We're just going to be using Orihime drawing crease patterns and stuff like that. We left off in the last video with these bird bases. And so we uh, did this bird base and we put a graft around the corner. And then we did, we, I briefly mentioned these other patterns where you can, you know, put strip grafts around on three sides or on all four sides. But uh, there's a little bit more that we haven't talked about. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how do you, what do you do if you want to add length slash detail to the center flap? Whereas on these ones, adding strip grafts around the edge of the paper, it will only, uh, it only affects the, the, you know, the corner and edge flaps. So what do we do about the center? For the center, so this might seem like, you know, I don't want, it, I don't want any misconceptions. We are not cutting, we're not pasting, um, but it might look like it. So what we're going to do is, again, we're not actually cutting or pasting, but it's going to look like I'm going to cut this in half, you know, quote unquote cut. And then we can move it apart. And then we can add our strip graft down the middle here. And so it might not, this might not have been an obvious move. Maybe you did think of it, maybe you didn't, but that's what we could do. And now, our uh, center flap ha has more paper in it, if that makes any sense. So for, um, if I were just to draw out where the center flap has paper, our center flap now is this stretched out octagon, other than just an octagon. So all of this belongs to the center flap, all this auxiliary. And then of course, obviously, we need to draw in our, our hinges and stuff like that. Okay. All right, that's one thing. That's pretty cool. So, and then you can, you know, you can pull apart the layers and make, you know, more center flaps or something like that. You can just, you just have more options now. It's going to be a little thicker. But here's the thing, that doesn't actually make the center flap longer. And if we want to make the center flap longer, we'll have to do something else. So, that brings us back to here. And so, grafting for middle flaps, we just did that. The longer flap. So, the way you can make longer flaps, and this most of the time applies, is that a graft will make a flap longer if it intersects with another graft. And of course there's an exception, which I'll explain in a little bit. But you, it kind of makes sense. If we go back to over here with our ostrich, we remembered um, when this vertical graft intersects with the horizontal graft, that makes this corner longer. Same thing here. But when these, this vertical graft is by itself on this flap, this flap doesn't actually get longer. It gets more detailed, but not actually longer. And the same thing over here. Uh, these bottom flaps, they don't actually get longer from the graft. But this ones, they do, right? They get a little bit longer. And the same thing here, all four flaps get longer because they all, have, they all intersect with the horizontal graft with a vertical graft on all four corners. Okay, so that's, that's something we need to understand. Another thing to note here, which will not always be the case, but we notice that the width of the vertical graft needs to be equal to the width of the horizontal graft, it's over here especially. So we'll keep that in mind. So if we want to make the center flap of this frog base, we want to make it longer, what can we do? So we got our uh, graft going this way. We need, one to be inter we need to have an intersecting strip graft going in the other direction that's going to intersect with this one we already have. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me just select all this, move. Now, here's something you need to notice. Remember over here, we said that this, the intersecting graphs need to be the same width. In this case, they actually don't. So just for the sake of example, I'm gonna make this one a super wide graft. Okay. And we're starting to see it's becoming more graft than frog base, which happens sometimes, but uh, you know, that's all right. And then we have our, our strips. Normally we pleat them, as you see here, but we don't have to. And then when they intersect, um, it actually looks like this. Let me just reflect it onto the other side. So yeah, so this is what our, and again, you can, we'll draw in our hinges. Okay, 
So I suppose you could fold this crease pattern for homework and you will see that the center flap is a little bit longer. However, when I said there's an exception, the uh, exception is that when we have these diagonal graphs and the corner flap. So you see the corner flap just gets a little bit longer for free. That's just how corner flaps work. But in general, for other cases, you need to have intersecting graphs in order to make the flap longer. Let's try one more example here. So I'm, for this example, I want to make an edge flap longer. We're going to need to make an interest, make, make some graphs that are intersecting here. So let's go ahead and start with the vertical graph. And then how do we make it a square? To make it a square, we add a graph of equal width on top. To, so remember, we had two units wide here, so we need two units wide here. And we see that the overall is still a square now. And then we just finish it off. So we can go something like this, nice and simple. There we go. And then now you see that this uh, edge flap is actually longer because we had intersecting graphs. And so again, I'm not going to fold this, but you can give that a try for homework. So now that we understand this, now that you understand that there's a little bit more complicated than just putting things around the edge, you can actually break up the crease pattern. You can cut it apart in ways, insert strips, uh, while still keeping it an uncut square. So there's, hopefully that gives you a sense that there's a little bit more you can do with a little more options. A while back, I mentioned this boat, how you can kind of, it's almost like spawning in paper. Now we can kind of understand the crease pattern a little bit better. So you see over here, we were working with frog bases just for fun. But here, this was actually a bird base, which you can kind of see. And that makes sense because there's, um, you know, the three sails plus the front thing. That's four long flaps. And then the little thing in the back, that would be the center flap. So the bird base fits pretty well. And then you, I just sunk it in. That, so that was the original base. And then for the head, I made a strip graph down the middle. So which you can kind of see it's uh, four units wide. Strip graph down the middle. So since the strip graph down the middle makes the corner flaps a little bit longer for free, that allowed this one on the top left to have a little bit more detail. And I could make it like a bird base kind of to make the head. And then bottom right, it just made it a little bit longer. Um, so the sails was a little taller. Now if I didn't have that strip graph, I wouldn't have enough paper to make the bird base on the top. This was a weird bird base. This was got kind of complicated. As you can see, like I don't really know what's going on. It was kind of just mushy. But most of the time, you can actually add bird bases on without getting super complicated. And let me just show you an example here. So I'm going to make a bird base in the top left here again. So Robert Lang actually talks a lot about this in his, in his book. But basically, we're going to start by drawing the actual bird base and then we'll figure out how we can transition it into the rest of the CP. So we start with this. We know we need a bird base there. And so since it's sticking out that much, we need to make sure the square, if it's in the square, like that. But then that comes the problem. Um, here's our strip. What happens here? What, ha what, do, what do we feel with the rest of the strip? Uh, this might be a little confusing, but I'm going to draw circles around where the flaps are, which we're not, we're not doing circle packing. Don't worry. but just get an idea of the flaps. And so it turns out when you see two flaps like this, you can kind of fill it in with this Y shape. It's kind of like an Elias stretch, kind of. Uh, and then I'll just make pleats down the rest of the model. So this is a pattern you might see a lot. It's a pretty basic pattern. And then another thing you might see is you might see people sinking it at a 22 and a half degree angle, just for the sake of it. But then uh, it just makes things a little nicer. So you can go ahead and fold this bird base thing for your homework. I'm not going to do it, but you can give that a try. So then you also see that these pleats, these graphs that we made, it allows you to have more details down here. So you can go ahead and sink this in and get some toes or something. Um, when you, your graph goes through the edge flap, you can actually do some stuff with it too that I didn't mention last time. So yeah, it might look something like this. So let's say, um, So let's say your uh, graph looks something like that. You can actually make toes along the edge flap um, by pulling apart the layers and making these little center flap kind of things. That's another trick. You, I'm sure you, many of you already know that, but I just want to mention that. So I think that's about it for grafting. For homework, um, again, you can just mess around with the grafting. I want you to, before you forget things, just give them a try. Uh, try it out in a design. So try using a Try adding a bird base. It's really good for adding, you know, entirely, like adding on entire details 
like a whole new head, right? It's good for with, you might need a bird base for that, or lengthening flaps uh, like this, or you know opening it up and sending grafts down the middle. Uh, remember, if it's a diagonal graft, the two directions do not need to be the same width, but if they are a horizontal graft and vertical graft, they do need to be the same width in order to keep it a square. So I think that concludes it for this lesson of grafting. In the next video, we're going to get onto some box fitting which is super exciting because there's a new software called Box Fitting Studio, which will be, um, we may or may not do some of this, but this is a brand new thing, came out for Christmas. Thank you to the developers. Uh, but we'll learn about this in the next video. So most of the things you see, like the shark skeleton, the knight, uh, not, not this one, but like the forest, these were all made from box plating. So we'll learn these techniques. It's uh, much better than grafting traditional bases. For example, a frog base only has five long flaps with four short flaps, right? You cannot make an entire skeleton out of nine flaps. So you need to use box pleating to make your own base uh, custom to how you want it. And so we'll learn that next video. Until then, um, like and subscribe, uh, and I'll see you then.